Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to take a look at velocity and how do we graph that? Okay, for beginners, right, say we have a graph where we have the y-axis and the x-axis. Okay, located on the x-axis for when we graph for velocity is time. And on the y-axis is actually going to be distance. Uh, what's really nice about this is if we look at the slope or the rise or run of this graph, when we rise, okay, we're looking at the distance. When we actually run the formula for finding slope, it's actually the rise or run, which is distance over time. It's the equation for velocity. Velocity equals distance over time. So the slope of this graph for distance over time is actually velocity. So when the line is actually moving up, we know that velocity is actually increasing. As a matter of fact, the steeper the slope, the faster we are moving. And if the slope is actually going downwards, it's a negative slope. That means that we're actually moving in the opposite direction. So maybe instead of going forward, we're moving backwards. So let's take a look at a couple problems here to help us out in understanding this. Our first problem that we have is a runner, actually two runners, that are starting off on a track. If you look, the first runner, it says ran 40 meters in eight seconds. Now he's gonna start at the beginning or at the zero meter mark. And actually on the timer, it's gonna be zero seconds too. So our first point is zero, zero. And then he takes off 40 meters, that's our rise. And our run is in eight seconds. So there you have it. Nice, easy way to calculate the slope. We do 40 over eight and we get our average velocity. Again, we're assuming moving forward. Our second runner, right, doesn't start at zero meters though. Still zero seconds, but if you take a look, it says our second runner starts at the 10 meter mark. So he has a 10 meter advantage at the very beginning when the timer hits start, right? So we move up our rise, we start at 10, and it says he runs 30 meters. So he's gonna rise from 10 to 40, because that's 30 more, and he does that in eight seconds as well. So if you compare the two slopes, we see that runner A is actually having a faster speed than runner B, but hey, they end up in the same place, that's good. Our next problem, right, has to do with a uh, baby Billy, right? He crawled four meters in two seconds, then sat still for four seconds, then moved six meters further in two additional seconds. So what we're gonna see is we're gonna see that there's movement, right, from zero meters to four meters, and we run in two seconds, okay? So you see a slope going upwards to show positive velocity, or velocity moving forward. Now, the thing that kind of shows you a little bit about velocity here on this graph is where he sat still for four seconds. How do we show that on this graph? Think about it. He's at four meters when he stops moving and he stays there. So that line actually is horizontal. It doesn't move, right? So a horizontal line on a graph of distance over time, where a graph for velocity shows no movement, right? And then last but not least, he continues to move six meters farther. So you're gonna see that on the distance part of the graph, he's gonna be moving to a total of 10. He was at four, moved six more to get to 10 meters. And in all in all, right, we see that it takes a total of eight seconds to get those 10 meters. All right, so if you're saying that, again, the greater the slope, the faster it's moving. Obviously, if it's going downhill, then it means we're moving the opposite direction, horizontal, not moving. Okay, here we have a chance to take a look at two kids that have their RC cars. The biggest thing about this is please only use the data that's available. Um, I know a lot of times in math class, you're used to this MX plus B or inequality that we're mapping or graphing. In this case, use the data that's there. So our first RC car is pretty easy. We start at zero for both of these. The first car goes 40 meters in 10 seconds. The second car goes 30 meters in five seconds. And then what happens? The battery dies. So what do we do is we actually, it just kind of flat lines, right? We have a horizontal line at the 30 mark. And we can actually add an arrow there if we wanted to, if the time continued. Um, for the most part, we're probably just gonna go to 10 seconds because that's where we know that car A went. But in reality, he could still be sitting there. Okay, the next problem just shows a 
kind of a nice easy situation where we have in this case a bus that's multiple stops and we're using a mile gauge for our distance and we see that the mile gauge doesn't just we don't add miles every time what, it, what happens is it's like an accumulation so we're seeing the total on what's called the odometer or the mile gauge and when we look at time there's two ways to do this we could use zero to represent 10 a.m and then obviously one hour would be 11 a.m two hours in would be noon and so forth or we could actually on the bottom just use 10 a.m and then do increments 10 then we have 11 12 1 2 3 so you can do either or or i'm going to show you that you can also do both so we start here at the terminal at zero meters or miles i'm sorry at 10 a.m or at zero on our stopwatch right he moves 10 miles in 15 minutes okay within two hours from the start we see that we've completed 100 miles travel in Reading okay it's at 130 that we see that we've made it to 160 miles 380 miles at 430 or again six and a half hours into our trip and last but not least nine hours into our trip we've made it 500 miles and now we see that there's a gradual incline for each of these trips because we're not moving backwards we're saying hey the positive slope shows that we're moving in one direction that direction is forward so regardless of whether we're going north east south or west um, it's going to show a positive incline and last but not least here we have a problem where we're looking at a runner who is looking at his lap times now this shows you two things for time so you got to be careful when you graph um, this shows you the increments between each leg or each lap or it shows you the accumulated time for example uh, for distance we're just going to make it um, each cell of the graph worth 400 meters it makes sense right so one lap would be 400 meters two laps 800 meters and so forth all the way up to 3200 meters now the first point is very easy to map so zero and then our next point would be 400 meters at one minute and 10 seconds. Now we could actually rise 400 meters and move over by a minute and 15, or we could just start at, as if we were at zero, we rise 800 meters and then move over two minutes and 25 seconds. So again, we can go from point to point and see the change, or we could look at it as a whole, as a coordinate. So you could see that, make sure you have those completed the last thing I want to leave you with is just kind of a problem where, hey, what would it look like if I said something start off moving pretty slow, it increased our speed. So if you're thinking about it, the velocity or the slope is actually going to increase if it's increasing a speed. And then say it stops, which we should know is flat, and then say it starts moving backwards. Okay, so that's where the line goes backwards. Right, so I want you to be able to see that kind of in a graph form. So take a look. Um, hopefully this helps you understand how to graph for velocity. Um, again, where this slope is actually the velocity. Okay, so thanks for staying tuned. Hopefully in a couple days, I'll actually release a video how to graph for acceleration. Things get a little bit more complicated, but if you're watching, hopefully we can make it easy for you.